you have moved to level three. When they try to move to level two, you have gone to level five. Because you see what they don't see. You hear what they don't hear. You get deep revelations that they don't understand. It's an unusual realm. And it's a mystery. Listen to this. Paul, the apostle, operated in this realm. And that was why it was difficult for the apostles to understand you know, how he operated. They couldn't catch up with him. Anyone operating in this realm is a dangerous man. Three things happen to the fellow in this realm. Number one, he lives the life of a living wonder. He continues to remain relevant for his entire life. He becomes too good to be ignored. You ignore him, you do so at your own peril. Joseph operated in this realm. And that was why Pharaoh and the Egyptians literally begged him to become their prime minister. He gave them the formula. They couldn't understand it. They had to beg him to come and implement the formula. Daniel operated in this realm for four consecutive regimes. He was the main man. May I pray for someone here today in the name that is above every other name. My God will take you to this realm in the name of Jesus. On a daily basis in an uncommon dimension, God will give you a fresh start. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, that is the mystery behind this church. People don't understand it. We are celebrating now that God has made us a province. But listen. My head is already full. The things I have received from God in these few days, if we start implementing it, I don't know for how long we'll be able to do that. I am praying for someone here. May God take you to that realm. Everyone will be playing catch up for you. Because you are always one step, two steps, three steps ahead. Because of what you know. People want to know what you know. Because they need what you know to survive. I pray for you tonight. In the name that is above every other name. My God will give you a fresh start. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Recover your seat. Fresh start could also mean failures and past mistakes are written off. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18, Isaiah 43 and verse 18, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. NIV says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. You may have failed yourself. You may have failed your parents. You may have failed your loved ones. You may have failed God. But thank God for jubilee. I mean perfect jubilee. That chapter of your past mistakes and failures, they are closed forever. So stop dwelling on your past. The devil wants your failure to define your existence forever. But please don't fall for it. There's something we do in my office. We call it Throwback Thursday. Every Thursday. Throwback Thursday. Now you see someone will post his photograph 20 years ago and then he will put by the side another photograph as he is today so you compare how the person was 20 years ago before and now some days back I ran into my photo <laughs> that I took on the day of my wedding 
I was looking so tiny and uh, but when I put it side by side with the way I look now I'm looking so fleshed up <laughs> now God is saying forget the past put it behind you don't judge yourself based on the past because a fresh start means the past has become the past I give you some examples from scriptures. So you know that it is not about, I mean, just encouraging you by mere words. Rahab was a harlot. I've preached this here before. Her level of harlotry or prostitution was, was so, so high and technical. Very sophisticated. A harlot by the city gate. The major customers are expatriates. They come with dollars, they come with pounds, they come with euro. So anytime an expatriate comes, the first place to touch base is Rahab's joint. And that was why when the Israelites entered there, immediately they alerted the king. There are some people in Rahab's you know, this thing, oh, they have come again. But listen, when you continue and follow the story of Rahab, over time, she turned from her prostitution. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, they refer to her as a woman of faith. If you read the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1, the whole of chapter 1, in verse 5, Rahab's name was mentioned. As one of the ancestors of Jesus Christ. I don't know how bad you think your past is. But I have good news for you. God is giving you a fresh start. I say God is giving you a fresh start. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. How about the prodigal son? He was the younger of the two brothers. And he said to his father, give me my inheritance. I want to move. The father gave him. If you read Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 32, the Bible said he went, you know, on a spending spree. Riotous living. That's the way the Bible, you know, mentioned it. Until the money finished. And then he tried to survive. He couldn't. And in verse 17, the Bible said, he came back to his senses. He said to himself, you know what? Look, I better go back home. There's a parent here in the house tonight. It doesn't matter for how long that your child has derailed. He is coming back home. <laughs> and he returned. The father received him and celebrated him. He said, yes, I know you messed up, but you are back, and I take you back. Paul the Apostle is a typical example of someone who failed and messed up in the past. In Acts of Apostle chapter 7, verse 57 to 58, Acts 7, 57 to 58, this man supervised the stoning to death of Stephen. But after Paul had met Christ on his way to Damascus, if you read his account in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2, 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 2, in NLT, he says, receive us. Please open your hearts to us. We have not done wrong to anyone, nor led anyone astray, nor taken advantage of anyone. Paul was speaking on the back of the fact that in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God will not hold your past against you. If you repent, 
and turn from your wicked ways. So how do you deal with your past? Consider what made you fail. Consider the mistakes you made. Repent from them. Turn from your wicked ways. And do one more thing. Forgive yourself. And move on with your life. Lift up your right hand. Say, I receive grace. I receive grace. For a fresh start. I refuse to be haunted by my past mistakes and failures. In the name of Jesus, I move. In the name of Jesus, I move. Say it one more time. In the name of Jesus, I move. So shall it be. Number four. What is a fresh start? Fresh start could also mean Lost privileges and opportunities restored. Lost privileges. You used to enjoy certain privileges. Certain opportunities. Somehow you lost them. This meeting is for you tonight. Because God is restoring them back to you. In 2 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 1, 2 Samuel 9 and verse 1, David woke up one morning and said, Is there anyone left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now listen to this. Before now, there was this son of Jonathan called Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was a prince. Because the grandfather was the king. And then suddenly something happened. Saul lost out. Saul died. Jonathan died. And of course, you know how David came in and became the king. This young man left the palace and went to a place called Lodeba. By this time, he was already crippled because he fell while they were trying to run away from the palace. Now in Lodeba, he was as... Completely, completely abandoned and forgotten. But on this day, God decided to give him a fresh start. And then by the time David invited him, see how he described himself. In verse 8, after they had brought him, he said, he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog? As he is, not as I am. <laughs> when somebody has written himself off to the point that he calls himself a dead dog, then you should understand the level that fellow is operating. May I pray for someone here today? Every situation or condition you have found yourself that has made you to write yourself off in the name that is above every other name, my God will deliver you tonight. But everything changed for Mephibosheth. Just one encounter, everything changed. The dead dog came back to life. All his father's wealth, grandfather's wealth, family's wealth, they were all restored back to him. As if that was not enough, David said, you will sit on the table with me just like my sons sit around the table anytime, you know, we are having dinner. So all his rights and privileges as a prince were restored back to him. Then the servant Ziba, who had 10 sons and 15 servants, plus himself, making 36, David said, 36 of you will be serving Mephibosheth day and night. I'm praying for someone here today. Every opportunity that you may have lost before now, every privilege that you have lost before now, miraculously, my God will restore them back to you. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. 
Listen to me. This is the first breakthrough encounter for the, for the 